Alright everyone, so today we're going to go over how to save money on a Zimbic. You can get a 3 month supply for as low as $25 or if you are a Medicare recipient, it may even be at no cost. So let's first look at the common way I look at things and see how much we can get if we use a coupon card. So with the coupon card, the average cost is just about $800, $750 for a single fill of a Zimpic. Uh, with single care and good rx is at 892 the retail cost is just about a thousand dollars anywhere between a thousand twenty five to about a thousand seventy as i've seen now that's that's really expensive so what else can we do well there are fortunately other ways to save money on your prescriptions and that way is to go to the actual pharmaceutical manufacturer in this case it's novo uh, let's go ahead and what we're going to talk about today so today we'll be going over the ways to save on Ozempic and the rabbit holes that expands as you look deeper into your health insurance. All right, so first we'll figure out which program you should apply for. There's two. We'll go over what the catch is and then we'll go on how to pay for it or exactly how you'll get it. Which program do I apply for? So if you're a non-Medicare or you have any or you don't have TRICARE, VA, Medicaid, DOD, or Medigap. Pretty much if you have a healthcare.gov plan or you have an employer plan, you're at work, you have group insurance from your employer, you would apply for novocare.com slash ozempic slash savings card. So that is the place that you'll go. And again, the links all be in the description down below. If you are on Medicare and you're on a Medicare recipient or one of those government programs, Actually, I take that back. You can't if you are on one of those other government programs. Only if you're on Medicare or you have no insurance, then you'll go to apply for the Novo Nordisk Patient Assistance Program, otherwise known as PEP. And there's the website right there. All right, so what's the catch? All right, so if you're a non-Medicare or non-government sponsored insurance recipient, Ozempic must be covered under your insurance plan and you must get it filled at the pharmacy that accepts and processes your insurance plan. Also, the program has a 24 month limit. Now I talked to someone on the phone earlier today and they did clarify that um, they consider an ACA plan as commercial insurance. So you would be able to apply. There's an asterisk on their website that says employer insurance. I clarify with a person on the phone at the savers uh, card hotline and they told me that they accept uh, or they will you be, will be eligible for the savers card so long as you have health insurance and that your plan covers Ozempic. Now if you are a Medicare recipient, you must have an annual income at or below 400% of the federal poverty limit. You also must provide proof of that via tax returns. And you have to fill out a six page form that must also be filled in and signed by your doctor. And you will have to apply for this program every year for the following year on October 15th or later. All right, so it's kind of more of a catch if you're on Medicare. So how will you pay for it? So if you're part of that first group, you have to first get the card activate the card and then go to a pharmacy that accepts your insurance your copay will either be 450 dollars off of a three month supply so depending on how much that three month supply costs you I and mean, it could be as high as three thousand dollars if you have to pay through your entire deductible so you may only get you know 450 dollars off of a three thousand dollar cost or if it's covered and you have a copay the copay on the medication can be as low as $25 for that three month supply. So if you're a Medicare recipient, it's a little different. The Ozempic will be sent directly to your prescribing physician. So if your primary care doctor prescribes you Ozempic, it will be sent directly to their office. If you have a another doctor who prescribes that to you, then it will go directly to their office. Whoever signed that form for you and prescribes the medication, will be the one that receives a medication for you if you are a Medicare recipient. So that can kind of be uh, problematic if you live further away from your uh, doctor that prescribes that. 
here are the resources again it'll all be in the description below also something to consider so if you are in the first group of people so let's go all the way back to non-medicare okay ozempic must be covered in your insurance plan that means it must be on the formulary additionally if your plan covers it as a chronic prevention medication then it will be not subject to a deductible so you probably will end up paying that $25 if your plan classifies it as a regular medication just part of the essential health benefits you may have to pay through your deductible now if you are looking to think about well what at, what about after that 24 months limit look into what's called a health matching account I'll have a video on my uh, channel soon about how to use a health matching account and with a 24 month kind of grace period where you'll be saving a lot of money a health matching account might be kind of like your way to save up for when you are no longer qualified for the program and it's also a good way to help save for uh, medical costs that you can potentially use in the future well, i hope this video helps i will leave you with the resources tab there again it's all in the link in the description below so go check that out if you have any more questions about other medications and how to save on those let me know i'll do some research make some calls so that you don't have to and of course i know the right questions to ask usually so i'll see you in that video